Good morning. Okay, good morning everyone. <laughs> I'm coming at you today from Garden and Guns Instagram. I'm Brooks Wrights and uh, I'm a Charleston based restaurateur. Um, I've been posting some cooking videos on my personal page, but I wanted to um, show you a very fun, simple, special dish you can make this weekend to celebrate Mother's Day, <laughs> which is on Sunday. Um, you know, mothers deserve a little something special on Sunday. Um, the meal that we all love, combination of breakfast and lunch, that um, you might know as blunch. <laughs> so I'm going to make something special for uh, for my wife, who's a mother, who's behind the camera. So is and, this what you're making Sunday? Well, we're sort of going to probably eat it now. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. The cool thing about this is this is a dish you can riff on, okay? So what we're gonna make are dressed scrambled eggs. Um, love eggs, love scrambled eggs. They make an incredible canvas for a bunch of different flavors, right? You don't just have to make scrambled eggs and eat them like that. You can top them with a number of things. So what I'm gonna do is make dressed scrambled eggs and I'm gonna dress them with some of the flavors of like a Jewish deli. Uh, I miss that since we can't travel right now. Um, and occasionally we will purchase smoked salmon and all the accompaniments from a place like Russ and Daughters up in New York. But um, we don't have any of that in the house, so I'm gonna make something kind of similar, okay? So to get started, I'm gonna take a nonstick pan and I'm just gonna get the heat on low just to start to warm the pan up. Um, there's a couple of different schools of thought about scrambling eggs, okay? Some people think you do slow and low for really small little curds. I'm more of the fast and furious type. I like to get a hot pan, dump my eggs in, and boom, 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 scramble them. They come together super quick, and they're going to have a little bit larger curds that way. So I'll show you how I do that. So in my little mixing bowl here, I have four eggs. Um, you can have more, you can have less, depending on the number of people. Um, I like to whisk my eggs up with a fork, and my little technique is I will lift the fork after I um, have uh, mixed the eggs up a little bit, and if they grip to the fork like that, right? They look mixed, but if they grip to the fork like that, they're not mixed enough. So you wanna really get in there, whisk the hell out of them, and you want to do that until when you lift your fork and the egg kind of falls through the tines of the fork. That's how you know the whites and the yolks have been nicely incorporated. Yeah, this is what I've never done before. So you can use a whisk. It's, you know, it's a personal preference, but I, uh, I like to do a fork because I saw uh, a video once of Jacques Pepin mixing his eggs up with a fork and I thought, all right, I like that move. <laughs> Makes me look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, yeah, beautiful. So now you see they just fall right through. Super watery. So those are beautifully incorporated. Okay, so the pan has been getting gently warmed. What I'm gonna do is turn the heat up higher to, I don't know, medium, medium high. That pan's gonna get really hot. So that when we're dumping in our eggs, we're gonna hear like crazy sizzle very quickly. Um, I'm going to season the eggs with a little bit of salt. I'll do that before I'm going to cook them. Um, just because they're going to cook very quickly. Now, the bigger the pan, the more space you're going to have. But what's going to happen is I'm going to put my eggs in with the olive oil in this pan. And they're going to sizzle really quick. I'm going to work them very quickly and then remove them from the heat um, after not much time because they're gonna to continue to cook in the pan. The scrambled eggs will come together nicely. You don't want dry and crumbly, you want moist eggs and that's gonna make for the best scrambled eggs. So I'm gonna go in the pan with a decent amount of olive oil. So a pan this size, you probably would max out at four eggs, you would yeah. think, and then you would, okay. Cause you don't want them to for get too pan. thick, kind exactly. of, okay. Okay, so. That seems hot. The oil is kind of shimmery and glossy. That tells me it's quite hot. I'm gonna go in. You're gonna hear those immediately start to cook and you're gonna see them seizing up on the sides. And with my spatula, I'm just going to 
work the eggs all around. This is not gonna give you those tiny little bits, but instead a larger scramble. So I'm gonna take it off the heat. You can hear it's still cooking. I'm gonna keep the heat going just in case I need to go back on. But you know, I remember growing up and scrambled eggs took what seemed like forever. This is a quick, quick, easy way to make beautiful, moist scrambled eggs. So it seems like movement is key because you're moving the pan as you're... Yeah, you want to really get those, get those eggs moving around the pan so nothing sticks, nothing's burning. Oops, nothing's getting <laughs> color. See, even a pro like me can totally <laughs> screw this up. That's just a joke because I'm definitely not a pro. <laughs> Now you can see how moist those are. Mm -hmm. You could add a touch of cream to these if you wanted, a knob of butter. I'm not gonna do that, but, okay, they're pretty much there. Just a touch more heat, because I know my wife actually likes them a little more cooked than I, and this, this dish is about <laughs> her, because she's the mother. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna turn the heat off. Those look beautiful. Okay, I'm just gonna let those sit for two seconds, but you can see the mm -hmm. how moist they are. They look creamy. Yeah, you, they want, you want them to be kind of creamy. You could go a little bit longer if you like your eggs more done. You could go shorter if you want a, a really nice, runny or creamy egg. Okay, so again, remember, eggs are always gonna continue cooking after you take them off the heat. They're not just gonna immediately come to room temp. But I've got my finished eggs here. I'm gonna go into a large plate and kind of spread them around the plate. Now remember, they're kind of providing the base, the foundation to this dish. So you wanna kind of spread them around there. In a way, they're like a, a sauce. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. You're really spreading it. Okay, like so. All right, now we're gonna dress the eggs because this is dressed scrambled eggs. I have some chive, honestly, it's kind of a really bad quality chive. You could use red onion as well, but I think the chives visually are gonna look nice, and um, they really didn't have nice chives at the grocery, but you could use red onion, you could use uh, scallion, you could use shallot, um, any kind of allium or onion that's gonna give you that flavor um, is your choice. Okay, so then I'm gonna take those chives and just kind of spread them around the eggs, like so, okay? Next up, I have a uh, hot smoked salmon. We buy this at the grocery store. I love this because it's, it's quick and easy to have on hand. You wouldn't have to use this, but this is what you know, it might call like a kippered salmon, right? So it's gonna have that great uh, texture of cooked salmon meat. You could also roast salmon and just use it yourself. Um, you could buy the canned smoked salmon. Um, number of options, okay? So I'm gonna peel that back and I'm gonna take the, uh, the meat off and I'm just gonna kind of dollop it around the eggs, like so. It smells amazing already. Mm -hmm. The color is really pretty on this dish too. Again, this could be so many things. This could be a, a smoked trout. This could be um, roasted mushrooms. I love dressing scrambled eggs because again, they make a great canvas for so many other things. Okay, so you've got your scrambled eggs, your smoked salmon. We're gonna put some cucumber on top of there. A uh, question for you. Yeah. Why do you get the cucumber that's wrapped in the plastic? Good question. It's um, it doesn't have the watery seeds in the middle, which I like for okay. snacking and for salads and whatnot. Um, and because it comes into the in the wrapper like that, it lasts a little bit longer. Interesting. I don't know if that's passe or not, but you know, I'm just one man. I'm just trying my hardest out <laughs> What here. kind of cucumber is that? This is an English cucumber. Okay, so we've dolloped the cucumber. This is a beautiful dish, really kind of visually appealing as well. Then we have a, uh, an avocado here. We're going to use a half. 
I'm going to cut that up into similar size. The, the, the plan here is you want all kind of similarly sized ingredients, um, which will just make it more fun to eat. It will kind of ensure that each bite you have all those goodies. Okay, so we're going to dollop the avocado all around. These are kind of the things that I would get on like maybe a bagel or a smoked salmon plate if I was having it at like a Jewish deli. And I just love all these flavors so much. Okay, so you got all the avocado, okay. Next up, we're gonna have some creme fraiche. It's kind of like the, the cream cheese on the bagel, if you will. Just a few kind of small dollops around of the creme fraiche. That's gonna bring, you know, that kind of little zing to it, that little, uh, little sour note that's really lovely you don't need a ton of this but you know use as much as you'd like you can leave this off it's not important if you have goat cheese you could use goat cheese um, you could use feta mm. um, any of those kind of things would be really lovely wow that looks so decadent all right then two more little ingredients here we've got some dill i've had this in the fridge for a few days not the best quality but again you know this is about cooking with love. I think cooking is about your intention and not about, you know, looking like a professional chef. So we're gonna go around the plate with the dill, okay? And then to finish off, we're gonna do a little sesame seed. This is kind of like uh, the everything bagel or the sesame seed bagel. If you have everything bagel spice, which sometimes they, you can find in the store, that would be a great way to finish this dish. Um, and then last but not least, I'm gonna go with some flaky salt that I'm gonna kind of crunch up in my fingers and drizzle over the top with that flaky salt. And uh, the final touch, mm drizzle of olive oil on top. Got some good fats for mama in there. So that's a good hearty breakfast dish for mom. Uh, but it, honestly, it's fun for the whole family. Hope you enjoy this. Hope you have a great Mother's Day. Thanks to all the mothers out there, including mine <laughs> and my sons. Uh, thanks very much.